Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory, boys. Um, this week obviously is my last game. Um, yeah, obviously I've been been really blessed to to play as long as I have. I honestly never thought I'd get to 21 years in the system. Um, the small boy from from Port Lincoln who um, <laughs> I'm getting emotional. I haven't been emotional all, all week at all. I was actually quite happy. This was going to be my last game, but. Yeah, a small boy from Paul Lincoln who just thought I just wanted to play for, for Mallee Park, my local team, and then play for the Port Magpies. Um, and then obviously the rest followed on from there. So, um, yeah, I wrote some notes um, just because, as you can imagine, there's a lot of people over, over the years to, to, get to, to get to me where I am today. Um, as you guys would know, there's so many people that help you personally. Um, but yeah, when I was first drafted the Port Adelaide, I was really lucky to walk in there as a, I just turned 18. Um, <laughs> I remember walking into the gym, my first weight session, and I saw the big boys on the bench press, they were 120, 130 kilos. The squat rack was <laughs> over 100 and something kilos as well. And then the, the, the weights coach gave me a broomstick to do some squats. <laughs> you can imagine how I felt. Uh, he gave me a broomstick to do some squats, and I was like, oh my God, I've got so, so far to go to, to catch those guys. Um, but that was one of my first memories of, of walking in the doors at Port Adelaide, along with cramping during the, the, uh, the warm-up <laughs> uh, when we were about to start our, our pre-season running session. So, um, yeah, I've come from a long way back. But obviously, drafted to Port Adelaide, um, obviously I have to thank some people from there. Um, Mark Williams... Uh, believed in me from the start, was very hard on me, gave me my opportunity and um, really pushed myself early days to, to be the best I possibly can be. So there's no doubt I wouldn't be the player with him and some other great people at Port Adelaide, you know, um, they're no longer with us now, but Phil Walsh and, and Dean Bailey, um, along with Clarker when he first got there, those guys really helped me um, as a young kid, um, trying to actually show me what the professional standards of to become an AFL footballer was, and um, along with um, you know the footy club, the, the Port Adelaide Footy Club, um, the team I supported to support my older brother, truly embraced me. Even when I got a trade here, and every one of them fans booed me <laughs> when we played against them, I really enjoyed that. I loved it. Um, um, it just shows how much um, I meant to them. So um, you know the, the players I spent over there. Uh, many memories, got to play obviously with my brother and my childhood idol, Gavin Wanganeen, and uh, many other great players. Um, so that was my first half. And then coming to, to Hawthorne, um, the great man here um, wanted me to come over once I said I was leaving and um, gave me all the faith and all the trust you, you, you put into me. Definitely helped, especially when I rocked up on crutches. Um, yeah, you, you made our transition so easy to come over here, Karen. Um, when Amy first came over, definitely helped her, but um, to, to do what you've done for us has definitely helped make this journey possible, so thank you. Um, um, the assistant coaches, there's been so many, Fags, Bevo, Simo, um, you know, th those guys definitely put a lot of time and effort into me, and um, although I came over as an older player, they still put the time and effort into trying to make me better, and um, so those guys really definitely helped. Um, Andrew Russell, he's not here, but I was fortunate enough to meet Jack my first year at Port Adelaide, um, and he helped instill the, the things that um, I needed to do to become a professional athlete, because actually I didn't really know what standards were, and Andrew Russell definitely helped me there, and then to reconnect with him here at Hawthorne on the back half of my career, the things he put in place um, definitely helped me. Um, and then the, the medical staff, although Pete Bequee's not here, um, he's the come over first, looked at my knee um, and said, yeah, we can, I don't think any other doctor in the, in the, in the land was going to touch my knee at that stage, but Pete said, I'll do a little impersonation, oh, yeah, yeah, we can, we can make this work, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, he, well, he grabbed his earpiece, he's like, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it's all good. Um, so <laughs> wherever you are, Pete, truly thank you, because um, no doubt if Pete said no, um, I wouldn't have come to Hawthorne. So Pete Bequee <laughs> and Dougie, uh, Dougie Evans was, was really big in that, in that time as well. So, um, and then the other, everyone else just flows on from there. Um, you know, the medical staff, Bart, 
Ferno, BJ, you know, Pocket, Zane, Boydie, you guys have all put a lot of time and effort into me. Um, I ask a lot of stupid questions about my body. Um, what can I do to get it right? What can I do to, to, to continue playing? And you guys put up with those stupid questions <laughs> um, every day, even if, I ask them for, even if I ask them five times, you still put up with them. And um, you guys are very, very patient with me. And um, I truly believe you guys give me the best advice possible over my 12 years here. So thank you to you guys. Um, and you guys, the players, like, what can I say, like, you know, um, you make it worthwhile coming to training. I love the fact that I can come to training no matter um, what happens. You guys make it fun and enjoyable. You, you give me a lot of stick, make fun of me all the time, which I really do enjoy. Um, you, make it, you make it worthwhile, you know, waking up every morning when I've got a sore back, knee, ankle, shoulder, neck, whatever it is. <laughs> I know when I walk in here, you guys take my mind off that because your, your, your banter and that is so good and their memories, you know. Um, you know, playing in the premierships with obviously the, the few of the boys here and, you know, obviously um, and Mitch at the back. Those are the memories you, you last forever when you, when you play in those games and you walk in the chain rooms and look each other in the eye knowing um, you've given everything you possibly can and whether you win or lose, but um, you've gone through it together and um, th those are the memories that I cherish and they're the ones I'm going to miss. So um, I don't know what I'm going to do now to... to to fulfill that void, but you know, to, to experience that with you guys, um, I love it. And um, thank you to you guys, um, truly, because like, without that stuff, um, yeah, it can be very easy to walk away, but you guys make it, again, make it so much, so much easier for me to, to come into training every day. Um, oh, fuck, I don't want to miss anyone. Um, there's some other people as well. Obviously, my manager, Ben Williams, definitely has helped me um, get to here. I think the trade at the time to come to Hawthorne was the biggest one in AFL history or something. Five clubs and so many picks and players. So he's a very smart man. So thank you, Benny. Um, my older brother, Peter. I, I lived with him for my first few years and definitely I wanted to be like him growing up, play AFL footy. So him, my parents um, definitely put me on the straight and narrow, taught me right from wrong. Don't drink or smoke, don't chase drugs, all those things that your parents do. So. Um, definitely helped me, um, definitely as a young kid, kept me out of mischief in a small country town growing up. So thank you to them. Um, Amy's family, um, all the support they give us, Greg, Julie, Rachel, Luke and Aaron, have always come over from, you know, whenever they can. Unfortunately, they haven't been here for lockdown, but thank you um, to those guys like they're, they're my second family. Um, and then finally, um, just Amy and the kids. <laughs> Thank you guys. I haven't been emotional. Amy's been emotional wreck probably the last eight weeks. <laughs> uh, leading to the 400th, um, I wasn't allowed to do anything around the house, which I actually didn't mind. Um, but, uh, wouldn't let me do anything at all. Um, you've been there from, from obviously day one. Given me all the support I need. Made it so easy for me to concentrate on footy. Um, when, when, we bought our, just our, our dream house in Adelaide. We just had the Kai and, and Percy, and then I came home and I said, oh, we gotta leave, we gotta change clubs. And she was, she was like, why? And I explained the reasons why I wanted to leave. And, you know, she's just given birth, our dream house in Adelaide, where her family is, and she said, no worries, let's, let's go to Melbourne and live, um, because it's, it's what's best for your footy. So the sacrifice, the love, the care, everything you do for me, has enabled me to, to, to just come over and play footy and then you've come over and then made friends, um, made lifelong friends and then you've given me two beautiful girls as well. Um, you're a beautiful mother, you do everything possible and you just make it life so much easier for me um, to do what I want to do and, and chase my dream but sacrifice yours. Um, so none of this is, is actually possible for me w w without you um, and so thank you. And, yeah, hopefully that's, that's everyone and if I've missed anyone, please forgive me. There's a lot um, of, of, of people I've tried to remember, but yeah, so thank you to everyone.
Thank you.